There's Mr. Well, Boyle. Okay, very good. It's seven o'clock. We do have a quorum, so let's uh, uh, open this uh, regular stated meeting on April 13, 2020. Uh, first first action is uh, roll call. Candy, please collect a roll. I have taken all the roll. Everyone is here. <clears throat> Very good. Thank you, everyone, for being uh, joining this call today or this uh, uh, virtual board meeting. We're getting uh, used to these things uh, and uh, getting better each time, I hope. Uh, next, uh, first uh, action on our agenda is approval of the agenda. So moved. Second the motion, Brent Hoffman. And Jason uh, made the motion. It's moved and seconded to approve the agenda. Candy, please collect a vote. We'll start the vote with Mrs. Sealing. Yes. Mr. Boyle. Yes. Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Winbolt. Yes. Mr. Updike. Yes. Mrs. Mitchell. Yes. Mrs. Anderson. I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson. Yes. Approved. Very good. Thank you. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, 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 States of America and to the, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next item is a school presentation. Dr. Burke? Yeah, um, we've got uh, Cassie Barton here. And uh, it is, uh, we're going to turn this over to Cassie and let her share uh, some information about Insight and the uh, Kansas Virtual Academy. So, Cassie. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for a few moments to give you our um, kind of annual update on just the happenings out at the virtual schools. I would say out at Hilltop, but it hasn't been like that for a while. So, <laughs> we'll dive right in here. Um, of course, as we've gone through the 1920 school year and have started planning for 2021 um, and the varieties that that may come to us in, we've been keeping our mission, vision, and goal in mind. Um, theme of our goal, of course, is our students. Everything is focused on our students, and we have worked very hard over the last several years to put the question, what is best for the students? at the forefront of anything that we do. And that has been serving us very well and we've seen a lot of success. So we're gonna share some celebrations with you this evening. We'll start with some academic items and some performance updates there. We've got several great things going on. Um, one huge focus we had for this 1920 school year was really re reworking our live instruction schedules um, so the schedules of the times that our teachers were online and would have students in meeting with them in live sessions and really um, working to have more, more of that time where it was targeted and smaller groups of students. Um, our focus has been really personalizing that education and that feedback, um, making sure that we are getting to know exactly what each student's meeting and then providing that support for them. Um, so that will continue to be a focus as we plan for 2021 as well. Um, it was a little bit of a, a change for our returning families, but as they got into the fall semester, they really did find that they enjoyed that. Um, it was easier for the students to engage and get feedback more quickly in the live sessions if they were smaller groups. And so we are going to continue with that plan. Um, all right. We also implemented this year um, Kansas Career and College Ready Standards Trackers for our kindergarten through 11th grade. And we have a couple couple different ones out there and we have found the one that we prefer. So we are working for 2021 to move um, the, it's the high school grade levels, move that one to the, the format that we feel serves us better um, and is just easier for the teachers to use. But this allows us to kind of keep track of all of the different standards for each grade level and each student and just where they are on that. And then that way that helps drive that targeted instruction in those small groups. Um, our kindergarten through fifth graders, so our elementary school, moved to a standards-based report card this school year. Um, it was a lot of work and kind of a large undertaking on the operational side of things and for our K-8 principal to, to work with operations to get that figured out. But 
it has worked really well. And the learning coaches have really loved that feedback and to see exactly um, what we've been working on and how their student is doing with each item. So we plan to continue that for K-5 for next school year and eventually look to maybe moving that on up in the grade levels. Um, but we're going to keep it elementary for now. <laughs> um, our middle school is saw a lot of growth this year. We had over 300 students in just 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Um, our 6th graders are part of KSBA and 7th and 8th are part of Insight, but we treat it as one big middle school <laughs> in our world, and they've been doing a great job and really have seen some great um, passing rate increases, so kudos to those middle school students and their learning coaches that are supporting them at home, and then of course our staff that are working with those middle schoolers. And our high school is probably going to finish the year um, record high passing rate as well. We're currently sitting about 7% higher than we were last year, and we set a record last spring. So we're just hoping to continue that trend. Of course, we are not going to have state assessments this year, um, but we will be able to complete our NWA MAP end of year assessments in um, late April, early May, we have been proctoring those online for the last few years. Um, so in some fashion, we're, we're very excited that we decided to do that a few years ago, because in this given situation right now, that'll give us some data where we would have otherwise um, not at least had an end of year type assessment without those state assessments this year. So we are going to complete that and we'll take a look at the students growth. And then, of course, that'll help drive our planning for August. Some other celebrations and achievements that we've had this school year. Um, our persistence rate has greatly improved. So families are sticking with us this school year, which has been very, very, very exciting for us. Um, we know that to some extent, we're always gonna have some folks that are here for more of a short-term short type situation, maybe a year, maybe two, just given the circumstances that they may be facing at the time. But we are working to just get them here, have them have a fantastic experience and stay with us. Um, so KSBA has increased their persistence rate by 4.6%. So you could also look at that, the withdrawal rate has decreased by 4.6%. Insight has increased by 1.4% this year as far as persistence rate goes. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a few minutes because it looks maybe small right here, but in another slide, um, you'll see year over year a little further out and it's pretty exciting stuff. We held our inaugural military expo this school year. Um, we have always done a trade and tech expo and invited someone to speak to our students about military, if they have an interest, what that would look like, what they need to do. And our interest has been high enough with our students, we decided to split it up this year and it was a great turnout. Um, we've had a couple of students that have committed to move on to military when they finish up at Insight, and so that's been very exciting, and they are ready for another one next year, so that I think will become a new tradition at Insight. Um, and then we also did hold our an annual Trade and Tech Expo as well, where we work with some Trade and Tech schools um, and programs across the state that we've built relationships with. Our um, school social worker, Alicia Harrison, um, kind of recruits folks to come and join us online, share a little bit about their programs and their schools and let our students ask some questions so they can start to see what is available to them after high school. We also held our inaugural talent show in February. This was something we'd been dreaming of and I'd mentioned in a past board meeting, I believe. Been dreaming of it for years, finally brought it to fruition in February. It was a fantastic turnout. I've got a little bit more information on that here in a moment. That tied in with our focus on increasing face-to-face -face events, um, not only in-person face-to-face events, but we've also worked to have more opportunities for online sessions such as uh, this type of format in Zoom or in some other platforms where students can see one another and interact on more of the social side of things versus the academic all the time. They've really liked that, so we'll continue that for next year as well. And then our graduation rate did improve by 7.7% .7 from our cohort 2018 to cohort 2019. So that has been something we've been working on over time, and we were excited to see it move in the direction it did and by that amount in one year. So we will continue to um, focus on that and find other ways to help our students achieve success in graduation.
So the talent show committee wanted to share a little bit of information with our staff, and I thought it would be great for you to know as well a little bit more about how it went. We had no idea how this would go over with students other than they thought it sounded fun. Um, but when we put it out there, we had a whole lot of students sign up, 65 to be exact, and you can see the breakdown between the high school and the K-8. And then when it came to, I guess, showtime, <laughs> we had 27 performers or artists. And you can see on the side, we had 13 visual artists. They submitted artwork, and I do have that here at the end that I will get to you so that you can peruse um, our artwork because it's fantastic. We had seven vocalists, a flautist, um, a Rubik's Cube solver. He was amazing and solved two of them in like less than two minutes. A gymnast, a ballet dancer, a barrel racer, an author that had written a short story sh to share, and a cancer survivor who had um, some information on just persistence and attitude and growth mindset. So we had quite the gamut of talents, and it was very exciting. We did a mix of some live performances and then, of course, some recorded performances as well. And then the art pieces were submitted, and we would do gallery walks in between acts and um, leave feedback for all of the artists. So it was really great to see the community come together. We took a gamble and did kindergarten through 12th graders all in one talent show. Um, and the committee did an excellent job of preparing our participants, but also going over um, just kind of how to be a good audience with our students that were in attendance. We had about, I think we topped out around 150 participants that joined us and partook in the first annual talent show. So of course they want to do another one next school year. We've talked about maybe breaking it up and doing two, maybe a fall and a spring or some, some mix like that, but we do like to keep it. We think we're going to keep it the kindergarten through 12th grade because that really builds our, our community feel that we've got going here with the two virtual schools. All right. Another celebration, just quickly, we do have 24 graduates. We have 24 students that have already met the graduation requirements, and it's just now mid-April, so we're very excited. 18 of them are teenage, teen students, and then six are our adult students. And we are still holding on our plans for graduation, waiting to see kind of what that looks like as far as an in-person ceremony or moving to a virtual ceremony. Um, I've heard from several potential graduates, seniors, and they really would like to have an in-person ceremony. So we will continue to kind of keep our ears out and see where the landscape lies at that point in time before we make a final decision on what to do there. And we will keep you posted as well. So a few new things to inform you about for 2021. Of course, we've talked about our Destinations Career Academy we are launching um, in August. It will be a career tech ed. Um, academy within Insight School of Kansas, so not a separate school. Our kids are really excited about it, and we are starting to get them to sign up for what pathways they might be interested, etc. You'll recall we just um, are starting with three um, areas, and then within each area, or I like to call them umbrellas, we have a few different options as far as pathways go. So we are going to be running information technology and offering the pathways of programming, game design, or digital design. Business, we have the option of marketing or hospitality, and then health and human services, we have the CNA program and the farm tech programs that we're going to offer. And then each year we hope to add a few pathways as we go. So they are very excited. We are getting information out there and they are starting to sign up so we can begin scheduling them appropriately in May. <clears throat> a couple of resources out there. There is a website that you might be interested in checking out that has more information on the DCA at Insight Kansas. And then there are some pretty cool opportunities coming for our students this summer. Um, there's an eSports camp, an Alert to Code camp that K-12 is putting together that our students can sign up for. They're free um, and all virtual. So there were a few of them that are very excited to jump on that opportunity. And then we're going to have a job shadow week in July where the students can learn more about different jobs and careers and ask some questions of folks that are in the field right now. So that is another um, couple of things that are in the works in the summer to get them really, really excited before they come back to us in August. We are also changing platforms. <laughs> um, we have been on a platform called Blackboard Collaborate for several years for our live session classes. 
Um, we have also done some experimenting in Zoom this past school year and have really liked the um, ability for the students to be on camera as well and that interaction that it brings. And so our new platform is kind of a mixture, the best of both worlds, as far as we can tell thus far. We are moving to a platform called Neuro. It will allow our students to have video capabilities that Zoom does, um, which we didn't have in our other platform. It also changes some of the teacher setup, makes it a little bit easy, a little easier for them to have some video integration, to play their different decks and slides and all the fun things that they have going on <laughs> um, more quickly and seamlessly um, and allows the students to interact. And then, of course, it will also allow us to record breakout rooms, which we are very excited about. That has not been a feature in our um, previous platform, and they have really, um, really wished it was. And so now that is coming to <laughs> coming to light, and they are very excited about that. That will allow us just to do more with activities and allow the students more collaboration and breakout rooms um, as the teacher is hopping around from breakout room to breakout room. So really, there won't be a huge impact other than just learning the lay of the land as it is with any platform. Um, it's going to still launch straight from the teacher and the student's schedules and will allow the teachers just to have more interactive, engaging sessions. Um, the tech side of things won't stand in their way as much as maybe it had at other points. And for students, the thing that I think the families are most excited about so far is that it won't require any downloads, so it will work on phones and tablets, which has not been the case before. Um, so that will allow them to be a little bit more maybe on the go at times. If they're out at an appointment, they can still hop on and join us for class, whereas they might have had to wait until they got home and catch the recording in our old platforms. So that is very exciting for us. We are actually one of the... Both of the schools are piloting the platform for this spring. And so we start next week with some of our live sessions being hosted in the new platform. So I'm sure there will be a lot of feedback and ex experimenting going on in the next uh, next month or so in preparation for August. And then everyone will be on the platform come launch of 2021 school year. And I thought this would be a good time. And looking back, this is typically when I update you on how we're doing on our Insight Charter Goals. Insight is a charter school with the state of Kansas. We write three goals, and they are five-year goals um, with KSDE. And so currently, our first goal by the end of spring semester 22-23, that sounds a long ways away, um, our passing rates will be at or above 80% for both middle and high school. And we are actually on track to achieve this goal this spring. So we would be ahead of ahead of ourselves a few years, but that's all right. We will take it. Um, so that was exciting to see. The next goal is focused on our graduation rate. Um, our goal was to raise the graduation rate at least 20% from 2016. And currently we are at 8.3% higher than where we were in 2016. So again, continuing to focus there, provide students more opportunities to find success and meet those graduation requirements. And then finally, our goal, uh, third goal for the charter renewal was by the close of 2023, our withdrawal rate will have decreased by about 10%. We're already, we have already decreased it by 7.5%. So we are also well on our way to meeting this goal as well. All right. And that was the information that I wanted to share with you this evening. We just wanted to thank you for your continued support. I know given um, everything going on in the world with um, the pandemic. Our families have been very excited that they have this opportunity and um, they're really just enjoying being able to have some sort of normalcy in the world. And so they know that that would not be possible without your support. So thank you very much for that. And I will let you know that again, I have some artwork included here. I can go very quickly through it. We've got all grade levels submitted different artwork. You'll see all different art forms here which is so much fun. Um, I know all of these students are more talented than I am in the, in the art world here. Um, but it was really neat to see the kids and just all the different art forms that they like to do, what they like to do in their free time. A lot of these were not assignments. They just did them on their own and submitted them, um, which was great for them to do. And Lauren S., our 11th grader, I had mentioned a few I think our high school principal, Heather Appleby, mentioned a few board meetings ago that we had 
a student win the K-12 national art competition. And this was her piece. Lauren S. is an 11th grader with us. And she um, titled this The Hero's Choice. It won Best in Show. And she did at the talent show talk a little bit more about where she got the idea for this piece, et cetera. So that was really a neat little lesson for our students to hear from another student um, on how she approached this. And that is all. I will stand for any questions. Um, I just had a comment that uh, was just it's really exciting that uh, you're, you guys are really headed in the right direction on that achievement and rates and graduation rates. And, and it's uh, really exciting to see. Thank you very much. Uh, great job, Cassie. I love seeing, I feel like you guys maybe are a little ahead of the curve right now, right? <laughs> you had it all figured out before this all happened. So we can really look to you for guidance and I just commend you for all of the achievements as well. It's really exciting to see. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Cassie, could you remind us what the date of the, the current date for graduation is? I know it's yes. possible it gets changed, but. It is currently set for May 30th at two o'clock. And I, I know that's most likely not going to happen, but we will see. <laughs> it's still, I feel like May 30th is a long ways away. We will wait and see kind of how things progress and then go from there. And I'd, I'd, I'd really mimic what, what Nell said. It's great to see that uh, the, the positive movement in the right direction and on all of the various um, metrics that you, you presented. I, I did, so, so passing rates, you've already met that goal, right? And you, these are the goals you set with Kansas Department of Education. You had, could you bring that slide back up? You had the three goals for Kansas Department of Education. Yes. <clears throat> grab it here. Try not to <laughs> quick spinning. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Seasickness there. So you're, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're well on your way for, I mean, you've already basically met the, the 80% um, pass rate. Yes. Uh, meeting that really goal close. in 2020. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the the one that that made me pause is this. So since two thousand sixteen, four four years, increased eight point three percent, and there's just what two two years left, and you yes. got to get eleven point or ten point seven. Is that yes. right? Yes. Uh, is there a is that a? I mean, is that you know, it's four years, so you're averaging a little over two percent per year. Um, do you have some kind of plans and strategy to gain that? that extra. Yes. So uh, it's a little misleading because we've <laughs> from 2016, we jumped and then we kind of took a step back and then we jumped again. This past year, we did grow 7.7%. So okay. we had a really stellar year there. Um, for this current school year, 1920, we put the credit criteria in place. We also, this is the first year we're operating with the two diploma options for our students. Um, that you guys had reviewed with us last year. Um, and then the implementation for next year of the DCA, I think those items will help us continue to see um, progress on the graduation rate. We'll see some improvement there. Hopefully another big jump or two like we saw this past year and, and that would take care of it. Um, it is a stretch goal. Um, we continue to work and have conversations with the state um, and other stakeholders, just again, explaining kind of where we're coming from, what we're working with as far as every student has a different story and different goals and um, they're at a different place than the next one. <laughs> so we just have to work with them individually. Um, we brought on a strong team of counselors this year and have really been focused on going over the students' individualized plans of study. Um, we've kind of changed how we approach that and you are using a new tool in our systems that let us show them like exactly what they need for classes and credits. So I think all of those things, I'm hoping we will continue to see those bigger increases in our graduation rate year over year. So we will get to that goal 
um, by the cohort 2022. Okay. Is there, what, what's the consequence if, if this isn't met? Um, typically, <laughs> I haven't experienced it yet, but I think typically it becomes a conversation with the state. Um, they provide some additional supports and we've actually been working with the state all along on this as well. Um, in different discussions on what a, what are some supports that maybe we're not thinking of? What are other virtual schools doing that are allowing them to be more successful than maybe what we're seeing here? Um, and continuing to have those conversations and try different strategies that they, they and others have brought to light. Um, and then what we would have to do, I think, is write a rationale for why we did not meet the goal. And then, of course, have our action plan on how we would continue to still work toward that goal. And then, um, obviously, for the next charter renewal, we will have to come up with three new goals. And if we wouldn't meet that one there, we'd have to include that one, I'm sure, as one that we just continue working towards. And we're working hand in hand with Insight for the accreditation process. And one of the big things that, that they have to do is show continual progress. So even um, uh, kind of the understanding that we have the state of Kansas, if they don't hit this um, benchmark that, they, that we would all love for them to hit, that we could still go ahead and not have any problems with accreditation as long as we're showing continual progress. We're working with uh, Yoda, and for the life of me, I cannot remember what all Yoda means, but it is a, a support a network through the Kansas Department of Ed, and we'll continue doing that. But one of their biggest um, one of their biggest criteria for our, for insight was to make sure that they are continually progressing and uh, making making positive strides, and and uh, we we feel very confident that uh, they're going to. If they don't meet this, they're going to come really close, but um, they're, they're a lot closer to it than they were a few years ago. So we're, we're very proud of the progress that they're making. Okay. And given some of the percentages that you showed earlier on, it seems like those are really precursors, almost leading indicators as to what you can expect um, impacting the, the graduation rate and the passing rate. Yes. The graduation rate has a lot of different pieces involved. Of course, we've got our students who are here and doing well with us, and that's that's one piece of the puzzle. But the other pieces are, you know, maybe students who enrolled with us after they'd already dropped out of their previous school and then decide, nope, I truly do just want to go get my GED or go ahead and drop out for now and maybe finish up my high school diploma later. Um, that come into play and they may not even still be enrolled with us, but they do still count on our graduation cohort. Um, so that's always been, um, it's an opportunity to track that <laughs> and keep, keep track of those students. Um, it does sound like the KSDE is coming out with some new reports that may help with that a little bit. So we can go back and have conversations with those students who've maybe came, tried us on, decided, no, this isn't a good fit at this time in my life and went elsewhere, but didn't go back to like a traditional public school that would have claimed them in the state system, see where they are, see if there's anything that we can offer to support them and get them to come back and finish it up on time. Or, you know, of course the adult student or the adult school is also an option as well. Um, it just may not be that they would get completed in their four year cohort. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to recognitions, Dr. Burke. I have to make sure I'm unmuted. Uh, we'll start with Spring Hill High School, Mark Williams. Hi, good evening. Hi, uh, good to see everybody virtually. Um, hope everybody is doing well. And uh, first I'd like to recognize my teachers for their, their support and their, their um, engagement in our continuous learning plan and everything they've done forth. Not only are they working to to assist the students with their academics achievements, but they're also reaching out to them to check on their social emotional well-being during these times. Uh, second, uh, it's going to be our students. Um, you know, I appreciate their hard work that they're doing uh, for the continuous learning plan that they're showing on a daily basis and also their perseverance of overcoming this new normal that we're living right now and, 
and having a lot of things thrown their way. So um, it's a pleasure to get to still get to assist them throughout this school year with that. And then on a side note, a quick little advertising, uh, Misty Etchison came up with a great idea last week to recognize the students of USD 230 and the class of 2020. So this Thursday evening, we're gonna uh, light up Spring Hill. And at the two middle schools and the high school at 8.20 p.m., we're gonna turn all the lights on at the athletic fields and we're gonna lead them on for 20 minutes. So the 20 and 20 is for the class of 2020, but also to recognize all of our fantastic students that we, we are fortunate to have here at USD 230. So thank you very much for the support throughout this time. We want to just remind people that um, we, we think it's great if they drive by, just it's not a place that we can congregate. So just uh, still have to follow the county and the, the state's uh, requirements on social distancing. Uh, next, uh, Wolf Creek Elementary, Beth Cooper. Good evening, everyone. Um, this evening, I'm going to recognize those folks in our schools who are really supporting our our staff and our families and students with the social emotional needs. And so I just wanted to recognize our counselors and social workers. They are really doing a lot behind the scenes that maybe isn't as noticeable as the teachers who are working so hard on their um, continual learning plans. Um, our counselors are checking in with families. They're talking with students on a daily basis, um, spending a lot of time supporting parents. Um, our My counselor has joined our team of specialists who are writing cards and letters to kids. Um, and as you may know, counselors in elementary schools tend to do a lot of small groups throughout the year. And so um, our counselors are checking in with those small groups. Uh, my counselors even pick some of those groups to still meet with a couple times so the kids get a little bit of social interaction because that's another place we want to be careful that we guard, you know, the growth that they work so hard to gain throughout the first three quarters of the school year. Um, but another piece that they're doing that's really critical right now is supporting our staff. Um, they're checking in and offering support, um, not just professional support in, in you know, passing that down to the students, but also just supporting them personally. This can be a tough time for folks. Um, and there's a, a good, strong, trusting relationship between our counselors and social workers and our staff members so that they, so they are um, adding that layer of kind of strength and support to our staff members too finding ways to kind of bring those people together and, and make sure they're still feeling connected with all of us as a school district. So wanted to just thank them for their efforts tonight. Next, we have Timber Sage Elementary School, Jason Townsend. Yeah, I get to uh, recognize our instructional coaches tonight. Um, our instructional coaches have been charged with the task of overseeing teams of teachers as they build our continuous learning plans. Um, to put them out there and for public view. And um, each week they're working with teams. I know our Timber Sage uh, instructional coach is working with the third grade team. And they do a lot of the hard work of leading these teams. And then um, they submit the uh, learning boards to the administrators for final view. A lot of times these things come to us and uh, they are looking really great. And I know they've stepped up to a lot of challenges. Um, things have changed. This has been a, a long process for a lot of people, but our instructional coaches um, from all the elementary schools have really stepped up. Um, and they're not even just leading teams from their own buildings. They're leading teams um, from all buildings. So the whole kindergarten team is being led by the Spring Hill um, elementary instructional coach, uh, people they've never met, and they're, they're coming together and doing these things. Um, but they've just done a bang up job. And, and pretty much every time the principals go to them and say, hey, we need to look at this. We need to change this. We need to, okay, we'll do this. We'll get our teachers on this. And uh, they really have done a fantastic job. Um, I'm going to add something in here. I, I shared this at the administrative meeting um, the other day, and I'm going to share it here, but we've had a lot of teachers and parents reach out and, and, and you don't hear it as much as you move up um, out of teaching into school administration and then into district administration. Uh, but we've had a lot of people reach out and say, Hey, you know, we have a lot of people checking on us. We need to check on you too. And they said, uh, you know, it'd be hard. I can't imagine what it'd be like to be an administrator during this time. And uh, I, I passed that on up to our district level administrators. I know Misty has provided a, um, excellent communication for our elementary consistently, um, week to week, um, day to day. You know, Phil's been there. The big guys have been there. Um, this is uncharted territory. So um, anytime I can take a, a comment and pass it on up, you don't get a whole lot of positives that go all the way up. 
Um, so I, I wanted to share that too. And the last thing I want to do, Phil, I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, can you all see this picture in my little screen? That's uh, Jeannie and Yvonne. They're our food service workers. Uh, this was taken last um, Friday. It was freezing cold. It was pouring down rain. And that smile wasn't just for the camera. They truly love what they do. Um, every time I ask them about it, they say, hey, we're just taking care of our babies. Um, this is the attitude that, that we have going on in our school right now. And they will walk out, they'll deliver lunches. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of these gals because they really, they are the heart of taking care of people. Um, they're just like mailman, rain, snow, whatever it might be. So I had this sitting on my desk and I wanted to share it with you guys because um, this is pretty important right here. Every day they're giving lunches to people. And so I just wanted to share that as well. Hey, thank you. Prairie Creek, Jody Cole. Good evening, everyone. Over the past several weeks, I visited with our teachers through Zoom and Google Hangouts, collecting information, giving information. And I believe we have enjoyed looking and learning for new ways to support our students. But the conversation this past Friday, it was different. I simply asked the teachers to share how they were connecting with their students. And at that moment, I saw the teachers become so excited to talk about their students and share all the great ways that they are connecting with them. They've sent handwritten letters, postcards, they've made phone calls, they've sent emails. They have participated with Zoom and Google Hangouts. And during these connections, they've asked students to share a joke, have a show and tell, they've read stories, they played a true or false game. They've played game of things. They've played categories. And some of them went on some scavenger hunts. One teacher asked her students to go find something that started with the letter D. And most of the students came back, you know, with their dog. And that was a real hit for all the kids. Our music library, PE, and art teachers are connecting with daily videos and challenges. So many thanks to our amazing teachers who continue to find creative ways to connect and spend time with their students. Thanks. Spring Hill Elementary, Tammy Endicott. Good evening. I wanted to take um, a few minutes of our time and recognize our special education um, teachers at the elementary level. Um, they are really doing a great job of accommodating and modifying the continuous learning plans for their students, checking in on them for social emotional, continuing to um, hold IEP meetings. Um, and a lot of them, even though they were told they didn't have to attend the general education Zoom meetings, they're on there anyway because they're that passionate about their students. And I just, I wanted to recognize them because they are dedicated, passionate educators who go above and beyond on a daily basis. And they're continuing to do that even virtually. And um, I couldn't be more proud to be a part of the Spring Hill School District and all of the things that our teachers and staff are doing to meet students' needs. Um, it's very impressive, and I'm very proud of them. Woodland Spring Middle School, Rod Spring. So good evening. I would like to first off thank our, um, am I coming through? Yes. Okay, thank you, sorry. Um, first off, I'd like to thank our um, leadership team at Woodland Spring for their hard work. This this was kind of one of those situations when it hit us, it was mind boggling at first. How are we gonna pull this off? And I have a strong team, um, Darcy Sly, um, Deb Taylor, Jolene Rutledge and Amy Berman and Andy Gloshan, all pulled in, were willing to work, gave it all, did all the research they possibly could, supported our teachers, trained our teachers, um, and then are still working daily to make sure that our implementation is going exactly as we intended it to go. So I'd like to recognize them and just thank them for all of their hard work. They've done a tremendous job. And Spring Hill Middle School, Trevor Gertson. All right. Uh, I feel like the first person to recognize is my wife uh, because she's at home with our uh, three children all day, every day. And then I get to come home and hopefully relieve her from that. Um, and so she's probably the first shout to make sure I give. Um, outside of that, it's been really, really exciting to see different teachers step up through this. Um, as you guys all know, when you work with groups of people, there's leaders that emerge at different times and in different ways. 
some were more vocal, some were more um, just willing to jump out in front in different situations. And this has been an opportunity for teachers who maybe hadn't always been comfortable um, putting themselves out there to now emerge. And so two teachers I've been really impressed with that have really stepped up uh, more than anything else is Allie Tunnicliffe, one of our fax teachers, and uh, Hannah Burns, our computer science teacher. This has been an opportunity for them to really kind of lead in a way that uh, kind of fits within what they're comfortable with. And I've been really, really encouraged by the work that they've done. Um, I also just want to give a shout out to Rod. One of the things I've really enjoyed about this whole process is collaborating with someone else. And so I've been able to spend time with Rod. Oh, man, there's my seven-year-old. Um, is uh, for Rod and I to be able to work together through this process. We're able to stay really aligned on what we do as a middle school. And I've really enjoyed that as an opportunity um, through this process. Uh, other, any other administrators that want to jump on and say anything real quick? Yes, this is Karen. I'd like to add on to all the great work that the teachers have done on the continuous learning plans and all the thought and care that has gone into them. I'd like to give a shout out to my administrative assistant, Vicki Cunningham, for the hours she's put in to take the work of the teachers and put it onto a very colorful format and publish that out there for everybody. Um, she is a graphic designer by, des def no, by design, bad use of words. And she takes a lot of pride in making them very nice looking. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Vicki because she's worked very, very hard on that. Anybody else? I have uh, recognition, um, Michelle Hackman, Human Resources. I know our administrators have a great deal on their plates as well as our teachers. Um, we're kind of living in the now and trying to, to cope with this new norm. In addition, we have to think very um, much towards the future and secure talent for next year. And our administrators and teachers have been working diligently to get interviews in and allow us to secure the very best talent out there to make sure that our, our students and our schools are stocked with well-equipped teachers, uh, custodians, paraprofessionals, and whatnot to prepare us for the next school year. So thank you to everyone for that. Is there anybody else? Yes, this is uh, JC Dalton with Nutrition Services. And I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. We served on our first day of meals, day one, we served 348 kiddos, and that would be two meals a piece. And today we serve 765. And the staff today did two days of meals, so they served three, over 3,000 meals today uh, to children in our community. So they are all working very hard. I just want to recognize um, the job they're doing and they care about our families. Any, anybody else before we turn this back? I, I think I would be remiss if I didn't say something, but I, I can tell you I, I've been incredibly uh, proud of the response that, that we've had uh, from, uh, from administrators to teachers to staff to uh, so many people in the community willing to and offering to help. Um, it's one of those things that we keep hearing the word unprecedented and never before happened, and this is truly one of those things. Um, we have, in my mind, uh, you know, the, the idea that we've, we've uh, served 3,000 meals today and we incredible amount of packets of information went out to parents and the technology that we're still doing and the cleanliness and so many different aspects of this that so many people have stepped forward and said, you know, I will do my best to make that happen. And uh, I'm just very, very proud and appreciative of all that. So um, I could I could spend the rest of the, the night thanking everybody, but um, as a whole, I've been very, very proud of, of USD 230 and our response to, to this uh, crisis. And uh, we will continue to do the best that we can. So with that, uh, I will turn it back to you, uh, Mr. Updike. And before we go on, I would just like to say it's it'd been awful easy to just uh, they throw their hands up and, and not be able to, you know, we can't do it. And, and we just haven't seen that at all. Everybody just pitched in and jumped in and did what they could to make the best of a tough situation. It's uh, just real joy to be part of this uh, school district and community. 
I believe Mr. Epdyke has left the meeting. So if, if that is the case, we will turn it over to Mr. Winbolt. You are vice president. So Mr. Winbolt, we are finished with recognitions. All right. So uh, let's move on to our first action item. We need to go through this action item to modify our public participation procedural for virtual board meetings. Um, Dr. Burke, take it away. Yeah, actually, I'm going to ask uh, Candy Kramer if she will visit with you about it. Candy is our resident expert, and uh, I'll ask her to share what's going on here. Okay, basically, we're going to have to modify the procedure for the public to fill out a card to talk to the board. So this card is filled out at the meeting. Meetings won't be public. So Misty has created a form on the website to allow the public to go fill out the form. When they complete that form, it will be emailed directly to me and I'll get that information ready to go. We have the meeting, then we'll set it up so that person is called. They can join the meeting at that point and talk directly to the board. So that's basically all that's going to be. And I would like to keep both procedures active on our public participation page so that anytime we have to go virtual, that one's there. Anytime we can do a meeting in person, that one's there. So, but we do need to approve the virtual policy. I'm sorry, procedure. Procedure. Okay, sounds good. Um, are there any questions or comments? Mr. Vice President, I'm going to interrupt for just one quick second. Sure. I, I would like to clarify that I believe one of the things we wanted to do is give them the option to submit written comment so that they didn't necessarily have to be available at that moment. Uh, Candy, can you clarify that, please? I didn't have that in there, but I sure can get it in there. That's in the regular participation uh, procedure. And we can also include that in the virtual. And where on the website will it be under our, on USD 230 underneath school board? No, basically it'll be on board docs under public participation. Okay. Probably one of the things that we're probably leaning towards is having that written statement at first, just so that we can verify who it is that's calling in. As some of you are aware, there's been some um, Zoom bombing going on. And uh, not that we don't trust uh, our community, but we'd, we would certainly like to make sure that it is our community that's sharing concerns with us. So we're going to probably lean towards the written. And then uh, 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 certainly we, we can set something up in place for to call them if we needed to so that they could speak directly to the board. Okay, uh, Doug, did you wanna take it back over? Uh, yeah, sure, thanks, sorry about that. I lost connection somehow. <clears throat> um, this is an action item and there, so the edit, uh, could you uh, remind us of what the edit is that you just added, Phil? Yes, uh, just that the comments would be available to be submitted as written statements uh, so that they weren't available at the time of the meeting, they could still have their comments heard. Okay. Any further recommendations or comments? This is an action item. Mr. President, this is Jason Winbolt. I move that we approve modification to public participation procedure for virtual Board of Education meetings. Uh, Nels Anderson, I second. It's moved and seconded to <clears throat> it's moved and seconded to approve the uh, the modified policy for, or modified procedure for the uh, uh, virtual board meetings to uh, include a, a description of, um, of uh, 
business with individuals and how that how that process works. Yeah, final questions or comments? Candy, please collect a vote. I'll start the vote with Mr. Boyle. Yes. Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Winbolt. Mr. Winbolt. Yes. Yes. Mr. Updike. Yes. Mrs. Mitchell. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Anderson. <coughs> Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mrs. Sealing. Yes. Approved. Very good. Thank you. Mm. Now, yes. Uh, Okay, thank you, Nels. Um, next on the agenda item is public trip participation. Did you see any information? Um, no, no. Prior no to part. or now? Okay, thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda, which includes approval of the consent agenda, approval of the minutes from a March 9th uh, special meeting, <clears throat> approval of the minutes, or uh, of our March 9th regular stated meeting, approval of the minutes of special meeting of the special meeting on March 23rd, approval of the minutes of a special meeting on April 23rd, uh, April 6th, a clerk's report, treasurer's report, payroll and claims, and personnel. Any comments, questions, or questions on the uh, consent agenda? I just want to comment that. Um... It looks like uh, Ms. Hackney has been busy along with our administrators. We have a lot of new teachers coming in and it's good to see that we're replacing our special ed teachers. Um, so it's, I'm sure it's still an ongoing process, but I really appreciate all their hard work. Yeah, as, 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 as she mentioned, you know, the just because we're all work from home doesn't mean the bus has to stop. I mean, we still have to have uh, still have to have teachers next year, and it's got to be a challenge to try to get people uh, to to understand the look and feel of our district when when it's just over a an internet connection. So, any other comments or questions on the consent agenda? Is an action item. Mr. President, Sharon Mitchell here. I uh, move for approval of the consent agenda. Brent Hoffman. Oh, go okay. for it. <laughs> I second the motion. It's moved and seconded for approval of the consent agenda. Final, uh, final chance for questions or comments. Candy, please collect the vote. We will start with Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Winbolt. Yes. Mr. Updike. Yes. Mrs. Mitchell. Mrs. Mitchell. She's yes. on. Oh. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mrs. Sealing. Yes. Mr. Boyle. Yes. Approved. Oh, okay, very good. Moving on to action items. Our first action item is Water One easements for Dayton Creek Elementary School. Uh, Dr. Burke. Yeah, I'm going to turn this over to Phil Elliott. Let Phil give you some information. Um, so we received this um, through Dr. Vance, the developer. Um, basically, this is the standard uh, water easements that we've signed at other sites. Uh, for the main extension around the Dayton Creek Elementary School site. Um, we did have uh, Greg Goheen take a look at it. He did have us modify the name uh, so that it was the official school district name and then change the signature blocks a little bit to meet state statute. Uh, but otherwise, it was good to go. We did get that updated one today, and it is available here. Please stand for any questions. Phil, you might <clears throat> you might want to show the water one exhibit so that they so this basically shows you the um, the gray box around the outside is the water one easement 
uh, pretty typical. Um, any place where you're doing a subdivision, they require an easement to extend their water main. Um, this obviously avoids all the building and and main parking lots. It obviously crosses some roads, but that's pretty standard. Thank you, Phil. So uh, um, I have a question on it. Um, why didn't they just put the main on the other side where the residential area is not on our property? We actually have a, a greater need because of uh, water flow and, um, and this creates the loop around the overall, if, if, if you would see the bigger view of this, that shows where the streets actually make a, a circle in this area. This is the internal loop that they do for uh, redundancy. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Um, Phil, how much uh, are they gonna need to be further on our property for construction? Do they have a wider construction easement? No, and it's all uh, part no. of the benefit. It, it's all part of the benefit district project out there. So it'll be going in conjunction with the roads and the su storm sewer and everything else. So it all goes in primarily at the same time. Okay. It'll be a mess out there all the way to the end anyway. <laughs> so it won't, shouldn't hurt anything. Any other questions? Uh, no, uh, Nels Anderson, I move for approval of the Water One easement uh, for Dayton Creek Elementary School as presented. Second. It's moved and seconded for to approve the Water One easement for Dayton Creek Elementary School as presented. Uh, any final questions? Just for record's sake, that was Allie Sealing that put in the second. Sorry. Kennedy, please collect the vote. We'll begin the vote with Mr. Winbolt. Yes. Mr. Updike? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Sealing? Yes. Mr. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Approved. Thank you. Uh, moving on to our second agenda or second action item, which is IDEA uh, Local Education Agency Assurances, Dr. Burke. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this over to Cindy Jaldos. She's our Assistant Director of Special Services, but she'll be our actual Director of Special Services next year, so Mrs. Jaldos. Don't forget, you need to unmute your mic. Start talking without it. All right, pretty simply put, these are the documents that the board approves and signs yearly. <coughs> in before you, if you have any questions. What kind of changes or differences are there between last year and this year? I don't think there are any. There aren't any? They are consistently the same. These are just the assurances that we are going to participate in IDEA and that we'll comply with everything, that sort of thing that we have to give every year. Yes, that is correct. If the board is not opposed to it, we may move this to uh, the beginning of the year in July, um, The when we do the operations and just have it put in there, if the board is okay with that. I, I would be happy to have it in as part of our organization. We can really uh, streamline things. That's a good idea. I'm, I'm okay with that as well. Mr. President, this is Jason Wendell. Uh, I move that we approve the IDEA assurances as presented. I would add that we approved the, uh, what you said, Jason, is approved the assurances, but I would also add the, the clarification to add this to the uh, organizational meeting in, in uh, July, given that 
it's just a standard consistent form doesn't look like they've changed it since 2007 so um i, I didn't think we needed to put that in the emo, uh, motion if we approve this tonight with the motion then does it not go in the july organizational items until 2021 No, if you that, approve it tonight, it's going to go in 2020 organizational items. I don't think I heard anything to do it tonight and then do it again on our 2020 2021 uh, organizational meeting. I was just unsure why we'd have to do it twice, but. Well, you, you, yeah, it's an annual thing. What are the, what is the, what's the timeline on this? Um, what's, when is it due, I guess, is my question. Uh, it seems like it would be uh, due to before organizational meeting. It's usually not? due sometime in June, I believe. I know we have to have it, it has to be dated after April 1st when it's approved. Can't be approved prior to April 1st of the year. And I believe we need to have this by sometime in June. So we couldn't use it. We, if that's the case, we can't put it in organizational. We'd have to move it to a June agenda or. So there's I guess, a huh? motion. Pardon me? I just started to say, ideally, it's usually on the April agenda is when it's usually done. So I, I think we could, this is something we could put in the consent agenda in future meetings. I think we keep it in the April meeting, but just add it to the consent agenda. It sounds like that's what we need to do. Yeah. Thank you for clarification, Mrs. Childers. Yeah. For this current motion that's on the table, I will second the motion, Sharon. Mr. Okay. It's moved and seconded to approve the local education agency assurances. Um, any final questions? Just for clarification, I think we'll add it. We're, we're saying that this will be added to the consent agenda um, in the April meeting for next year, rather than an individual action item. So any, any questions or additional clarification needed? Candy, or Candy, please collect the vote. We'll start the vote with Mr. Updike. Yes. Mrs. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mrs. Sealing. Yes. Mr. Boyle. Yes. Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Winbolt. Yes. Approved. Very good. Thank you. Moving on to our next agenda item, which is the Apple bus contract, Dr. Burke. Yes, we brought this up, uh, guys, seems like uh, forever ago. Uh, we're proposing a three-year contract with Apple Bus. Uh, we've been working with them for quite a few years. Uh, there's a couple of changes. Uh, we're, they're ask, we're asking for a 4% rate increase for 2021, a 3.8% for 21-22, and a 3.8% increase for 22-23. If you remember when we did the original uh, proposal as a discussion item, uh, we we uh, demand. Well, I should. I hate to use the word demanded. It was part of our um, negotiations that the rate increases would drive up our our hourly driver rate or wage. Most of our drivers are local, and we uh, basically said if we're going to have a rate increase, we want to make sure that that money is going to also be seen directly in our driver's paycheck. And so that was part of our negotiations. Uh, the only other caveat, if if uh, for some reason we cancel due to weather or other safety recent, uh, reasons, the school district, uh, we will go ahead and pay 50% uh, of the contract for that day. And again, that, that is a, a safety measure that we're putting in to make sure that our drivers continue to, to get paid even if we cancel school. So uh, hopefully we won't have to cancel school anymore. And uh, 
uh, in the middle of all this, you, you never know. But uh, our recommendation is that the board approve the three-year contract with Apple Bus. With that, I'll stand for any questions. This is an action item. Mr. President, this is Jason Winbolt. I move that the board approve the three-year contract with Apple Bus as presented. Allie Sealing, second. Moved and second to approve the Apple Bus contract as presented. Uh, final questions or comments? Candy, please collect a vote. We'll start the vote with Mrs. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mrs. Sealing. Yes. Mr. Boyle. Yes. Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Winbolt. Yes. Mr. Updike. Yes. Approved. Very good. Thank you. Moving on to our next uh, action item is the Y Care Agreement, Dr. Burke. Yes, uh, the Y Care uh, lease agreement is uh, we're, we're asking continue that. We do that yearly. Uh, there's been no rate increase. And so we're, uh, we're able to work with them and uh, feel like this is a very positive before and after school program. Also within that is uh, what we call the PLC time. And that uh, YCARE has been really good to work with us on that. Uh, they dedicate $20,000 a year to do that. So there's no additional cost. And uh, they send personnel uh, into the buildings to help us uh, help us staff that, uh, so that our teachers can have professional learning community time. And so, very appreciative that they're continuing to want to um, make that donation or benefit to our district. So, with that, we ask the board to approve the Y Care lease agreement. Sheriff Boyle, I move the board approve the Y Care lease agreement as presented. Brent Hoffman, I second the motion to approve the Y Care lease. It's moved and seconded to approve the Y Care agreement as presented. Uh, any final questions or comments? Candy, please collect the vote. We'll start with Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mrs. Sealing. Yes. Mr. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Winbolt? Yes. Mr. Updike? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Approved. Very good, thank you. Moving on to our final uh, action item in this group is the board meeting calendar for 2021. Dr. Burke? Yes, I believe this is something that uh, Candy Kramer and Katie Claire have both worked on together. I believe that we are uh, reciprocal dates uh, from last year. Uh, there is a little bit of adjustment because of the morning meetings uh, so that we can make sure that uh, all schools are have an opportunity that have the board visit all schools every two years. And so with that, uh, we asked the board to approve uh, the calendar for the board of education meeting schedule for the 2020-2021 school year. Mr. President, I move we approve the 2020-2021 School Board of Education meeting schedule. Chairman Mitchell. Allie Sealing, second. It's moved and second to approve the board meeting calendar schedule for school year 2020-2021. Um, Candy, please collect the vote. We'll start with Mrs. Sealing. Yes. Mr. Boyle. Yes. Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Winbolt. Yes. Mr. Updike? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. 
Approved. Very good. Thank you. Moving on to our discussion items is uh, first item up is bond issue construction report. Dr. Burke. Yeah, we'll turn this over to Tim Meek, our director of construction and safety. And Tim can give you an update on uh, even with the COVID virus, the one thing that construction co uh, that that is nice that most of our construction is outside and we can continue. So Tim Meek. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Burke. Um, I'll get right into it. Uh, we were able to finally uh, get a couple of projects closed out. Um, and so I'll go on to the next page here. So it kind of show you the what's behind that. Uh, Are you sharing your screen, Tim? Yeah, I yes. thought I was. Let me try it again. You see it now? I can see you. No, I can't see your screen. Okay, let me. Phil may be coming running down here. <laughs> <Just a second. laughs> I want you to notice that we're practicing good social distancing. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, we were. Scattered all over the place. All right, there we go. Little little share button. Always helps. There we go. Now, can you see it? Yes. All right. I skipped this page here, but uh, really what I wanted to get to is the next page um, and show you what's, what's, what the changes were on that budget contingency. Uh, the uh, Woodland Springs Middle School closeout. Uh, final savings on that original budget, you can see is 31,762,445. The actual expenditures we had was 31,829,013. Um, our total budget up there was $32,334. Uh, final savings we have is $505,161 on that project. Um, a lot of that came in from construction. We used none of the contingency on, not none of it, but very little of the contingency. So that rolls the contingency all back into that as well. Uh, so, um, Furniture fixtures, we had some savings there. Um, and uh, so we're able to go there. Uh, next page, there we go. Uh, early Childhood Center, our next closeout. We had an over, we were a little bit over budget on that. Um, the actual construction was under budget by 35,442, but our FF&E expenditures expenditures were over budget uh, due to some of the Spring Hill Elementary School furniture and equipment that we thought we were being transferred and some that we thought would be left by Spring Hill Middle School um, North when they moved out to uh, Woodland Springs. So there was a few things like a copier. We had to add an additional copier in there. Um, die cutting machines that we weren't, we hadn't planned on buying so some of those things, but uh, uh, overall, we're very happy with the two projects coming in a little over $450,000 under budget. Uh, and uh, going back to that, the other part of that is uh, when you look at the very first page, there's maintenance money. Um, I'm going back and forth a little bit. Uh, maintenance money in there for um, bond for construction. In, the, in that bond and uh, some of those things that we still have to expend out. Um, we have some larger projects such as the elementary school rehab, uh, which is gonna be on their parking lot. Uh, that's gonna be hundreds of thousands of dollars, not just a little bit. So we've got some more maintenance money to spend out. Um, we've also still got land acquisition and site development to, to go into, so. All right, we're well, going back down to the safety report. Uh, I know at one of the meetings that I was not at, uh, we were asked to, to get a 2016 bond safety report. And uh, it was neat finally seeing the numbers and seeing how everything is. And you look at that figure, $385,060. And uh, not dollars, man hours. And uh, 
and look at how many safety walks and total site supervisor walks and stuff we had uh, out of those 385,000 hours, we had one recordable injury. Um, and there's really a question on whether that's recordable because it actually didn't happen. Uh, it's happened on site, but it happened in the back of a delivery vehicle for the electrical. So, uh, but again, the TRIR, the total recordable incident ratio is 0.52 on that. Uh, which the industry, a good industry rating is about 3.0. So uh, very good total recordable incident ratio there. Um, on the Nabholz jobs, we had 29,621 hours, no recordable in in injuries. And so their TRIR is zero. Um, one of the things I wanted to share with you too on, on as far as safety going on, and, and that would deal with the COVID-19, we are right now looking at um, and we've been discussing with J.E. Dunn and, and very likely going to Johnson County Con Courthouse has instituted a deal when all construction workers come into work that they're asked a few health questions plus their um, temperature is scanned and if it's over a certain amount then they uh, are sent home and have to um, have a doctor's release to come back to work if it's over um, 100.4, I believe. Uh, Jeremy Baum is here as well, if we had any questions on that. But uh, we would have a healthcare professional on site uh, to take the temperatures of the workers as they come in, plus ask them a, a couple of questions as well about uh, how they're feeling and if they've been out of the area or any of that as they show up so that we can, we can screen them as they're coming in. Um, there's a cost to that. Um, it is about $12,000 a month. Um, uh, we would do it on a one month basis and, and reevaluate after one month. Uh, we would have somebody, a uh, healthcare professional on site during that whole time. So, all right. Going on to the 2018 bond issue. Uh, Hey, Tim, budget. Have, they, have they started that or is that something they're planning to start? That is something we're looking at starting as soon as we can get everything rounded up. Um, Johnson County Courthouse has done it and they felt like it's very successful. I think it, it at this point, it'd be a nice way for us to make sure we can continue on. Um, we asked what the cost of shutting the project down would be if we had to. Um, mm -hmm. And the cost of shutting down, turning workers away, um, remobilization of, of potential uh, companies having to remobilize is quite a little bit more than what that cost would be by multiple fold over. So we uh, feel like it's probably a good idea to do it. And, and uh, uh, we'd like, again, it'll be a month to month basis. So. And the only thing would be is if we'd get to the end of a contract or something and had a good stopping point that you could put a delay on it without costing a whole lot, probably. Or does that you, impact your people who don't want to reevaluate their bids or something? Well, if, yeah. I mean, if we got to the end of a, I, I want to make sure I'm hearing you right, Nels. If we got to the end of a contract, um, well, the building would be done. Each one of the buildings would be done. And obviously, or if a contractor was done and offsite, there wouldn't be any, but let's say at Dayton Creek Elementary School, our Mason had to uh, shut down for a month. Uh, they're gonna most likely wanna pull all their scaffold and everything else and go to somewhere else where they can work. Uh, right, I, I meant if we uh, if, if we got to the end of the masonry contract and, and but we didn't hadn't started something else or we just chose to delay the start of something else. Yeah, we could do we that, work. but... Uh, some of those trades have to fall to so many of them fall fall together so yeah. uh, okay Fair yeah enough. it'd be it'd be tough to do it plus i mean really one of the biggest ongoing cost is even more than that it would be the the cost for the je dunn personnel who would still be on site mm -hmm. as well at least to start with to make sure uh, we have a continuity of plan and and if we were to send those away um we had to send those guys away because we were down for more than a month uh, we could end up getting back somebody else, not that they're not capable, but 
there would be a new learning curve to bring on a new project manager, new superintendents or something like that if they had reassigned them sure. to somewhere else. So the other thing, or, Nels, within the within the individual trades, one of the biggest concerns is just their equipment, uh, Connex boxes and material storage uh, mm-hmm. was would be another huge factor that we had to deal with. Sure. Our our construction projects are doing the same thing you're talking about with the temperature taking and questions. So sounds like it's kind of an industry industry wide standard. I mean, it it is to a point. Uh, I can tell you, I'll be honest. There are some projects that aren't doing it, um, but I think it's we. I I believe we have the money there to do it, and I think it's a good way to to go. Again, it'll be reevaluated every month to make sure. You know, we'll be doing it one month at a time. So, and Nels, are are your are your end customers doing this for the contractors or? No, we're we're for the sites that we're managing we're we're taking care of it that, that's where i'm going is is this our really our responsibility or is this something that je dunn should be looking into well you, you got to realize that we do construction management um most of what the other ones that are doing that where the contractor's picking it up they are the general contractor or cm at risk uh, by doing cm agency which we're doing it would be ours. Uh, I thought that's where you were going to go, but I just wanted to make sure. Thanks, yeah. Tim. Yeah. Because we are the general contractor. So, yeah. Beck, any other questions on that? Okay. Moving on to budget for the 2018 bond, there's really uh, no real changes in that. Um, and so we'll go on down to, to the Educational Support Center. Um, still, construction began began in September twenty nine, summer of twenty nineteen. Uh, scheduled opening fall of twenty twenty. Um, next milestones: complete installation of all exterior wall panels and finish all the windows. Um, we had a, a miss order of some wall panels that came in a half of a foot too short. Um, we got them expedited and, and uh, they were custom color. We were still able to get them expedited. Uh, they're being installed right now. So here in, within the next week, we hope to be 100% enclosed. Uh, right now we're dried in by using temporary uh, methods, but uh, we'll be 100% uh, dried in with, with the, the full product. Uh, we're gonna complete the, all the MEP rough in and, and begin sealing grid. Uh, and then we're going to start some of the outside beginning installation of curbs. Uh, another thing that you'll probably see here in next month is uh, we're going to be bringing you the bids for furniture and equipment for that building. Uh, so look for that coming out. Uh, challenge successes on that project. The uh, interior metal book framing and the drywall Dahmer has got uh, good crew there. They're they're going right through it. Uh, they worked hard to get the upper stuff done in the drywall and framing so that all the contractors that had to hang stuff above ceiling uh, had somewhere to do it. Now they're coming back and putting in the lower stuff. Uh, Pro Mechanical or HVAC uh, company, there's a lot of piping and stuff going in for that HVAC. And uh, They've been a little bit of a challenge to get the manpower there. Um, they're a little spread thin. Um, and the insulators right now are kind of in a short supply. And so to get all the piping insulated has been tough right now too. Um, Oliver Electrical, um, they've brought in a couple extra guys to make sure they're staying ahead of the drywaller and, and doing a phenomenal job. Uh, another th- thing we did uh, to help out uh, was we put in a temporary hand washing station. You'll see a picture of that a little later um, to help the guys uh, to uh, make sure the hygiene's well around there, keep their hands washed and stuff like that. Even with the portable toilets with the hand sanitizer, um, there's been a little worry of some of the portable toilet companies saying that they're getting a little short on the hand sanitizer. And so we want to be proactive and bring in a um, this portable temporary hand washing station in the building so that we can make sure the guys were washing their hands properly. 
the Dayton Creek uh, job, I'll say, I'll mention that right now. Surprisingly, that company that's doing their portable toilets says they've got a good supply and, and not a problem. So uh, safety report, uh, no accidents, no lost time for 187 days. So here's a couple of pictures, aerial photos from 331 of 20. And then uh, just a little over a month earlier, you can see quite a, quite a difference, concrete, real salon, siding. Uh, this is a view of the warehouse dock with the slabs all poured the where at the loading docks and the drive up doors, uh, exterior south uh, side view, uh, the purple panels or something. I've had some people comment as they drove by, oh, that purple panel looked good. So uh, kind of a surprise. It brings a little color to that side of the building. So we'll go on down to some interior ones here, metal framing and drywall. Uh, as you can see, the uh, we're actually going to be starting to paint some areas next week. So uh, a lot of the areas are just moving along. There's a picture of the uh, temporary hand washing sink that we've got. A uh, couple of uh, hand washing stations, good hand soap, uh, uh, paper towels. You can actually see we even brought in a per little uh, small uh, 10 gallon water heater. So they have hot and cold water so they can uh, actually wash their hands in warm water as well. Uh, interior view of our tech department, that's uh, uh, the collaboration area and the tech department has a little show on their outside uh, uh, view they have. Moving on to Dayton Creek. Uh, scheduled uh, was fall of 2019, opening fall of 2021. Uh, next milestones is complete the concrete building slabs. Uh, They've got a couple of them poured. They're moving back into the gym right now to, to uh, pour the gym slab. Um, steel framing and masonry. Uh, uh, Mason's coordination is, is going right now. The uh, steel will be showing up here in about a week and a half as well to start some uh, steel framing. Uh, you'll see more and more walls from the highway as you drive by going up and, and the building starting to take shape. Uh, challenge successes, really a lot of successes out there. The Mason uh, has been doing a phenomenal job everywhere. Um, uh, he's been pushing uh, to get more and more space. He's been putting up walls. As, uh, he's got a little slack in his schedule with some people, so he's got a lot of manpower, and, and he's got a lot of scaffold set up and working a large area right now. So the MEP contractor uh, did a great job of getting ahead of everybody. Uh, so all the under slab MEP is, is done now. Uh, installation of temporary utilities, electrical water and installation of site utilities, um, sewer and storm water are all, are all finished. They're not connected to anything at this point, but they're, they're all finished and ready to connect to the city stuff when the city gets theirs in. Uh, safety report, no accidents as well there. So. Dayton Creek, you can see a couple of aerials. Uh, again, another little over a month. Uh, appreciate Mr. Delphia getting out and, and getting these for us uh, regularly so you can see the difference. Uh, that's a view of the, the uh, gym and that's a view of the uh, wedge basically goes down to the library and uh, down to the special ed pod, the, the kind of triangle in the middle of the building there. That you got. And Next will be uh, middle school number three. Uh, not a lot of change there on that other than um, still trying to do all of our due diligence. Uh, we're still, uh, we still working with the city to make sure we can meet all of the stuff we need to meet there. Uh, we did have geotech on property and that's been performed so we can uh, start getting DLR to uh, ready to go as soon as we, we own the property. Uh, How did that turn out? Anything unusual? Nothing, nothing that they red flagged at all on it. So yeah, yeah. good. Uh, anticipating a property closing date, hopefully it's still May 29th, 2020. We'll hopefully hold to that. Other construction project. Um, you can see the, the board office is done there in that picture. Not quite, but uh, uh, <laughs> it's a nice, nice picture. The, the architect had to do a class for, the entire deal. So he had to put some really neat perspectives together. And this is one of the few that he sent us there. Uh, kind of gives you a nice picture of what the front of the building is going to look like. Schedule for that building. Um, construction began um, scheduled for 
spring of 2021 or a little before if we can. Uh, next milestones are footings, which started um, the end of last week. Uh, and then the building slab on grade, and we'll be starting with, uh, before our next time update, we'll be putting up uh, the steel structure as well. So uh, challenges, successes, both again, uh, all the blue moon and uh, the doing site utilities, but then also Lithco getting in right away as soon as blue moon had the pad ready, uh, Lithco was there and started the uh, footings and foundation part of it. Uh, weather was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, they worked half the pad and, and was able to work the other half and get it done and, and still on schedule right now. Uh, only 18 days and no accidents. So uh, that picture is a little hard to tell, but you can see right there, that's part of the footings going in. Uh, that was on the eighth. Um, and on the ninth, we were pouring footings. So any questions? I do have and Jeremy, I think he's on standby as well from Jay Dunn if you had any questions for them. So, uh, Tim, early on, my audio cut out. I thought I heard you say something about elementary school refab or parking lot. That back when we were talking, yeah, up in the bond, um, some of the money that's left when you look at that contingency that we still have left, uh, some of that's uh, still maintenance money and all. And one of the things that we talked about was Spring Hill Elementary School's parking lot. Uh, we're, we're right now working, uh, trying to get an engineer to, to give us the best recommendations and, and all to uh, rehab that parking lot. Uh, it's in pretty bad shape in some areas. Uh, we started out first trying to get some contractors to do it and we got four contractors in. Kylie was working with them and they had four different ideas of what to do. So uh, we're, we're looking and we'll to uh, bring an engineer in to where we can get their recommendations. We may end up having to do some small borings or whatever to make sure what our slub sub uh, parking lot area is like to before we can do that so yeah okay thanks for that update on that all right thank you thank you tim any other questions for tim no all right moving on to next to yeah. discussion items uh mower purchases dr burke you know, as we gain land and gain property, uh, we still have to uh, mow for that property. We also have to account for that whenever there's snow removal. And so uh, Kylie Delphi is our uh, director of buildings and grounds and, and uh, custodial. And I'm going to turn it over to Kylie. Thank you, Dr. Burke. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. So the facilities department is in need of two mowers for the grounds crew. Uh, before going over the details of the mowers, I'd like to first talk about why we need the mowers. Uh, one, we have two mowers that are high in hours and that have several issues. Uh, one is a 2007 grasshopper, uh, has over 4,000 hours. It has several issues, uh, including hydraulic leaks, overheats, the deck is worn and uh, it's currently unable to mow. We also have another mower, it's a 2008 John Deere. It's got several, several issues as well. Uh, decks worn, um, uh, got bearings going out and the stick steering is unaligned. Um, this mower still runs, but it's still in, probably need uh, several thousand dollars in repairs. So I'm hesitant to put any money into that piece of equipment and fear something else will uh, fail with it. Uh, we also have failing piece of snow removal equipment. It's a 1982 XL. It does snow removal only, and it has numerous issues. Uh, matter of fact, this year it's died twice out in the middle of the street while we were pushing snow and we had to come pull it off. So kind of some safety type electrical issues that it's just, I think it's time to part ways with it. Um, the other reason we need mowers is growth. Uh, with the addition of Woodland Spring Middle School and the future additions in Dayton Creek, and the Education Support Center and Administrative Center, we're going to have a significant uh, more amount of snow to mow. 
Um, so that's the second reason. Are there any questions about the reasons why we need mowers before I proceed on to uh, talking about the mowers? Did you say that was the John Deere was a 2000? The John Deere is a 2008. 2008. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had 13 year old piece of equipment in the grasshopper, 12 year old piece of equipment in John Deere, and then I can't do that math. It's like, what, 18 years in the Excel and growth. Yeah. One of the, one of the, um, have we added staff? Well, I mean, we've been we've been growing and a lot of a lot of grounds work. Have we added staff, or is this uh, is one of the one of the approaches is to basically buy ex, uh, buy larger, more efficient equipment? Yes, that is one of the reasons we did add one grounds worker, and I'm not a hundred percent sure when uh, uh, that person was hired on. I want to say last year, but I don't know. I could be wrong about that. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh, well, and that's 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 fine, Kylie. Where where I'm going, where what my line of thinking is, is that we've added Timber Sage, we've added uh, Woodland Springs, we've added. Uh, we're we're preparing to add um, education support center in the district offices. So there's four pretty, pretty large areas with additional grounds and, and yes. yet we've just added one person and our equipment is at least 12 years old, the minimum, the, the newest piece of equipment. Yes. So do we have, do we have other mowers that are currently being used? Or we we do. Have we, we have six mowers. Uh -huh total now one of those mowers is just a stand-on 48 inch uh mower it's basically for doing islands and, and mm -hmm. things like that so it really doesn't do your wide area so i would just say we have five mowers and the one that's failing that we can't even use anymore would bring us down to just four mowers so okay thank you mm-hmm So since early fall of 2019, we've been researching and looking at test driving several mowers. We've came to the conclusion that the Toro Groundmaster 7210 is the best mower for our current needs. Uh, the mower has several features that give it an uh, advantage over these other mowers. Um, number one, it's got a 100 inch cutting deck. So these other two that I have listed here on the spreadsheet have a 72 inch cut. We typically drive about eight miles an hour when we're mowing. So you can see the difference. We're getting about two more acres an hour with the 100 inch deck. So uh, it's got a seven gauge heavy duty cutting deck on this mower. The mower is also an all season piece of equipment and it will not only mow, remove snow, it will groom athletic fields. It'll do finishing grades, collect leaves and grass clippings, and it will blow debris off parking lot sidewalks and athletic fields. Um, I want to add some additional uh, information about the snow removal system. Uh, if you look on the spreadsheet, you can see when we're comparing mowers to mowers, the Toro Groundsmaster is just shy of the John Deere 1585 terrain cut, just about $1,000 shy, a little more. Uh, when we start adding in the additional uh, snow accessories, the price really jumps up on the Toro. And there's a reason for that. Um, the cab, it has a cab system that you put on it, which is heated. It, the cab system includes mirrors, lights, turn signals, tail lamps, and flashers for safety. It also has a track system that you install on it. And I'll share that. You can see right here in this picture, that's what this, this is the mower, and then it turns into this piece of equipment here. So it has this track system on it. 
And what that track system does is it gives you more maneuver maneuverability in the snow and it evenly distributes the weight over a larger area. One of our big issues we have with the sweepers now is on our shorter sidewalks when we're straddling that with the typical mower that turns into a, a sweeper, it will actually put uh, indentions in the side of the sidewalk. And we have to go back and fix those later on in the spring uh, with fill dirt and reseed. So it does a lot of damage on the outside of the sidewalks. This prevents that by evenly distributing the weight across. So uh, also it has other attachments you can put on here. We don't typically use the snow blowers, but we would want to put the snow sweeper on there, which is listed here in the spreadsheet. Uh, so at this point, all we're looking at adding onto that mower is just the cab, track system, and sweeper. And as stated before, this piece of equipment can do a lot of other things. It ain't just uh, snow removal and mowing. It also has a debris blower you can put on it for cleaning parking lots. It's got a nail dragger, drag mat, steel drag, tooth rake, and finish grater for doing all sorts of other things. Uh, so it's just a real versatile piece of equipment. Um, it also has a uh, triple bag collection system for uh, leaves and grass clippings. Um, I did, while doing the research on the mowers, we did look at a couple municipalities that have these mowers. We talked to them. Uh, we talked to Blue Valley School District who has these mowers and also University of uh, Missouri uh, had great things to say about the mower. Um, just the efficiency of, of uh, mowing being the 100 inch deck and also the snow removal equipment just being an all around good piece of equipment doing many things. Uh, finally, I do realize the mower is a lot more expensive than the competitors, uh, especially when you add on the uh, snow snow removal equipment. It's a lot more expensive. Um, and while I would typically pick the less expensive piece of equipment of a comparable model, I would argue this mower is kind of in a league of its own with its ability to have the 100 inch cut and do the snow removal with the track system and have all the other attachments you can put on it. It's, just really kind of stands alone. I would argue that these two aren't really even comparable uh, pieces of equipment compared to this. So any questions? Kyle, did you say where we're getting the money from on this? I believe bond issue, Doug, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm not Doug, but yes, this could come out of bond issue. Correct. Sounds good. Hey, Kylie, I had two things. Uh, the first one, it's uh, kind of crazy. It says it'll climb an eight inch curb. But the, uh, the other thing is how, how difficult is it to switch it over between the cab and the tracks to a normal mower? It is a an eight hour job for one person. It's about a day's work to do one to switch it over is what they say. And they said if somebody's, you know, has done it a couple of times, they could do it in six hours. Um, they will actually come out and they'll have uh, technicians on site to help us do that install, do that transition for the first time. So we kind of know what we're doing. And uh, so, but yeah. Eight hours, when you get good at it, you can do it in six, one person. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. You have any more questions for Kylie? He's done an incredible amount of research on this and Again, he it, it feels like this is a dual purpose. And uh, as much work as we do in the winter, uh, this is a lot more than just purchasing two mowers. And I think this is 
something that's a value add to have the uh, track system and the snow sweeper with the cab. It's something where it can use for, for many, many years. I think it's a good job, Kylie. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Kylie? This is an action item. Or no, it's discussion. Discussion. Just discussion. Yeah. So it's I mean you gain about fifty percent efficiency um, by having a larger deck, right? Mm -hmm. Um the it looks like the real difference is between the uh is the track system, really. Yeah, it is. Yep. And so that track system saves um having to go back and fill and seed, fill and rake and seed the damage that's caused by not having a track system, right? Yes, that's correct. And so, you know, is that, I mean, so you look at $8,200 for the track system over, looks like we get, you know, anywhere from 12 to 20 years out of our mowers. Um, so, you know, do we save $820 a year by having the track system? You know, that that's, that's how you, I'm working through the thought process on having that because it's expensive I and mean, that's a lot of money. I mean, they can't get around that. They're all three of them are a lot of money, but um, the reason I asked about how many people we'd hired is I, I was just trying to think in my head, I was trying to think of how many acres of just simply mowing grass we've added in the last five years. And yeah, we currently have 116 acres we mow. Um, yeah. with the addition of Dayton Creek, we're looking at adding seven more acres. Uh, to, so we have a lot of, a lot of acres of mill and this would really help having just that extra inches of cut would really help us, uh, gain efficiency and, and get things done in a more timely manner. So. Did, did you look at all of the reliability? Uh, we, we know the John Deere's last quite a while, but uh, what about the Toro? Toro's, you know, some of these, the people I've looked up, uh, the municipality of uh, um, Shawnee, they've had older mowers, Toro mowers, that they replaced with these, and they had good, that's the only recommendation I have for, their uh, durability and reliability was from them. Uh, they said they've had the older ones that they replaced with the newer style, and he had good things to say about the reliability of them. So, good, good. Any other questions for Kylie? Thank you, Kylie. There's a lot of work that went into this. We appreciate how how diligent you are and and uh, really identifying the best uh, best case scenario. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next discussion item is student representation on the board. Uh, this is ours, I guess. What uh, What's the update on that that you were after Nels and Brent? Uh, actually in their defense, I'm the one that put that on there. Uh, basically, we had, I think we had everything set up that we were going to visit schools after uh, spring break and then um, uh, life happened. And so, um, you know, uh, I don't know if we could try to get a whole class in on a Zoom. I don't, I think that might be kind of hard to do. Uh, I didn't know if you want to wait until the fall until we can get people back together. What is your thoughts? I was just going to bring that out to the board. I'm okay with uh, waiting until the fall. I think it's, you know, yeah. something that we need to stand in front of um, our students and ask them if they want to participate or however we are going to do the process. But I, I, we can wait until the fall, in my opinion. I agree. I think that this is important and Nels and Brent have worked so hard on it that I wouldn't want to halfway put it out or I think that it's really important. So waiting to the fall probably is the best. 
Okay. I just wanted to make sure that you you, you knew that we didn't forget about it. So yeah, I, and I would I'm say I'm fine is, with that. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I'd say right now it's probably not one of our highest priorities. Yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, revisit it later. Okay. All right. Next is COVID nineteen, Doctor Burke. Yeah, I wanted to. Uh, guy, it, you know what? Uh, what it, what is the old saying that the days are long and the years are fast? Uh, I can tell you, it feels like uh, uh, we gave you an update on what we were doing with COVID-19, uh, I believe a couple weeks ago, or maybe three weeks ago, and it just feels like it was forever. Uh, I did want to give you a, a quick, brief update on some of the things that, that, that we are doing. And so I wanted to start with uh, JC Dalton and let her let you, let you know what's going on with the nutrition services. Um, as I said before, our first day, day one, we served 348 kiddos, breakfast and lunch meals. And today we did 765 children. And that's ages one to 18. Um, we've been pretty successful there. The staff's doing a great job. Up until today, we did meal distribution every day of the week. So Monday through Friday. And then this week, we are switching to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So less exposure for staff and for our families. And it went exceedingly well today. I was a little concerned about elementary as we feed the most kids out of there, but they did an excellent job. So each child got four meals. They got two breakfast meals and two lunch meals. And so, like I said, we did 765 times four, which would be how many over 3000 meals that were served today to our kids. We still have our sign up sheet or a meal request form um, asking parents to sign up. And that just helps me to forecast numbers for the day. So if we're making turkey and cheese sandwiches, or something like that, it gives the staff an idea. I pad those numbers because we'll serve anybody that comes, one to 18. Um, they don't have to be signed up to get meals. It just helps us to make sure we are ready for those families. Um, reimbursement, I thought we were gonna be on a summer, summer um, food service program reimbursement. We are not, we're in our regular reimbursement rate of free meals. So for every lunch meal we serve, we get $3.7575. And then for every breakfast, it's $1.84. And that's for each of those meals served. So we are gonna get some federal reimbursement, which will help us at this time. Um, we're still maintaining national school lunch and breakfast program regulations, which can be difficult with some of the meals we're serving. We're also, I'm trying to start using up inventory that we have on hand. So there'll be some many changes over the next few weeks so I can try to move some of that stuff out. So our kids can enjoy that and we won't have it sitting here or lose it over the summer. Uh, food availability is becoming a little bit of an issue with our vendors. Milk, um, not, shouldn't be a problem anymore. That was a problem before. We didn't have a problem, but other districts did. We were having a problem with produce. So we added a new produce vendor, CNC Produce, uh, out of Kansas City. And they um, will pre-cut and portion our vegetables. And the, the vegetables looked really good this morning when they came in. And then with... With our other vendor, we've had some issues, shortages on things like string cheese or those things that most schools are using, certain peanut butter jelly sandwiches, um, other items that almost every district around us is using for meals. We're all doing cold grab and go. There's a few districts doing hot stuff. So we're all wanting to get the same items. Um, I think that's, that's about it. It's going really well. I'm really proud of our staff. They've, they've done everything we've asked them to do. They started I asked them to start wearing masks today. We are still gathering more masks. We've had lots of individuals making us masks. And so we'll finish getting those handed out Wednesday when they come in. And then all staff should have masks to wear during preparation, serving and cleanup. JC, do you need more masks like homemade masks? We've got a lot of people donating to the office. If you need homemade, I could get you some for sure. I appreciate that. We are good. I think I've got, now I have about 25 in my office. We just had another, we had three more individuals. I didn't know we're going to make them and they did. I had an employee that knows how to sew and quilt and she made out 30 and I was, I'm so impressed with everybody that just steps up and has been donating. So that way each staff member can have two awesome. because they have to be washed every day and every time we wear them. So thank you. I appreciate the offer. Sure. Also, thank you for the clarification today. I think even I was a little confused on that, um, that the, it's open between one and midnight daily to to submit for meals and I am um, correct I can't thank you enough for this as even a working mom and I'm super impressed with the selections and my kids are so thankful too so 
I thank you personally also, but, and also thank you for the safety and all that you've done. This means a lot district wide for our kids to make sure that everybody has enough food. So I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Good you. Uh, Allie, I, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, uh, Ali, I think we would take you up on it. Uh, Kylie is going to start having his people use masks. And then the teachers that are out distributing packets, I wouldn't mind getting get a mask for them if you've got them available. Yeah, so our community has been amazing. I mean, so amazing, dropping off masks for us. We can't wear the homemade masks yet until we run out of the medical masks, ear loop masks. So thankfully we look like Metro wide that we're getting more and more PPE in. So we might not need the cloth masks. So I would be happy to bring some over to you. I'll bring them over tomorrow. Perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sharon, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, JC, I just had a question like your increase from the first day till now, do you think it was, or do you have any kind of information that would give you an indication of why there's so many more? Are people starting to feel the financial crunch um, more? Or is it just more of an awareness of how to sign up and how to get the meals? I think it's more of an awareness. And I, I know that um, the second week we did it, we had families that said, oh, this is our little field trip to get out of the house today because the kid, we're all stuck in the house and we can get out and we can maybe on certain days wave at a teacher or we can see our lunch ladies or lunch men and, and wave. It just gets it's almost a social thing. Um, the first week we used a roster at every, at every site except Civic Center and we served 20% of our Neil Surd were for students on our nutrition benefit program. So we are serving a lot of other kiddos um, throughout the community and even from other districts. I've gotten some input from parents that may teach or work in another district or live there, but they, or their kids go to school here or they go to school there, vice versa. And they, they, they're bringing them here because of, there's less of a wait. And sometimes or it's just, it's nice to take a 10 or 15 minute drive uh, to get out of the house. Yeah. Thank you. Kylie, you want to talk to us about uh, custodial and cleaning? Even though we have buildings that are not uh, open, we still have some people, uh, some people in them. So, Kylie, you want to walk that? Walk hey, before we jump ahead to Kylie, um, JC, I had, I had just a couple questions. How do you, how do you, how do you ensure food allergies are addressed? Is that if we elevated a risk, or is that is that in in some way? If a parent, I still have the, um, I've been filling out Nutrislice online so parents can get on there and look at the ingredient labels. If I have a parent call, we can make special arrangements. I've got two kiddos that uh, the, at one school and they've talked to the, the lady, my staff member who's in charge. She knows when they come through and then those children don't get milk or they might have a sandwich without cheese on it. So we're just, we're doing what we're really by speaking with each other. And um, like I said, the ingredient lists are on the website for parents okay. to see. Are parents using the forms? Are they signing up? Or are you seeing there's a big delta between what is what is accounted for on the form? I will tell you, or... most days are excellent. Monday, today was, was not the best, but I had a feeling. We only had 300 sign up at elementary and we did 379, no 378, but I had, we had padded it. So I know 15 of the meals were, um, they weren't turkey and cheese sandwich. I think it was a, uncrustable for those that didn't have peanut allergies. Um, but usually most days parents are real good or they'll call us and say, oh my gosh, I, I did forgot to sign up okay. and we're saying, okay, what school are you going to go to? And we'll make sure we're padding anyway, but that was kind of a, a big jump at Spring Hill Elementary today. So, and I, I, remember, I don't remember the specifics of a conversation, but Dr. Burke and I had, and he was talking about hoping to handle 10,000 meals and you did about a third of that in a single day. So that's, pretty amazing to just the the sheer volume of <laughs> of of work and it's not just handing them out um it, it starts at that preparation all the preparation you having the uh what do you call it the nutra nutra serve or nutra system, slice nutra slice. Nutra slice. Mm -hmm. i mean there's a lot of time energy and dedication that goes into making sure that that's done well um, and for the protection of our, of our students and, and, uh, the family, the kids in our district. And so it's, it's pretty amazing just, the the collaboration teamwork that you see, I, I, it seemed like through every principal, uh, every principal's report out today on, uh, acknowledgements, it, it talked about this collaboration and it just, it's just throughout the entire uh, district and so just it, it boggles my mind to think 
about having not only preparing 3,000 meals, but to make sure they went out to the right people at the right time in a short, very short, compressed period of time, right? I mean, you only hand them out. Uh, for about a, yeah, an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, and so, I don't know, do the math on that. That's every second or two, you're, <laughs> you're getting things done. So well done. That's just a, that's a huge you. accomplishment. And it's just, it amazes me. And I, I don't, I'll get off my soapbox here in a minute, but it just truly amazes me about how, uh, how, how the entire district has just come together. I think Jason talked about, uh, it was either Jason or Trevor talked about f seeing leaders, leaders step up that were probably a surprise. And yes. just to see that that happened. And I think to me, the sh one of the shining stars is being able to uh, take a program that doesn't exist and run it up to 3,000 meals in a, in a single yeah. day in what a two week period three weeks yeah three, three weeks. week period um just tremendous growth and i think it all it is really contributions by everyone but certainly you leading it and and driving that program is is truly an amazing accomplishment so thank you well done is what, is what i'm saying it's not a not an easy task so. thank you i appreciate that yeah you're Very welcome, welcome. Uh, okay dr burke you want to move on to kylie and cleaning Yes, sir. Kylie. Yes. So cleaning goes on. Um, what we're doing, if we have a principal in, in the school or any other individual, we basically go behind them e either after they leave or early in the morning and we go in and disinfect the area and sanitize it and do our normal cleaning. Um, like Dr. Burke said, we don't have a lot of people coming in, usually just principals and our custodians and the food service. So uh, we have moved on to doing the summer type cleaning activities, such as extracting carpets and waxing floors and some of that other detailed type uh, cleaning things. So uh, that's where we're at, basically in a nutshell. Are you having any difficulties getting clean supplies? I know you preempted this, but I think you 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 belong to some uh, an organization that that was you were reading a blog that they were having difficulties in California is that right and so you had pre-ordered some so that's correct yep yeah. we I pre-ordered a lot of cleaning supplies and we well, that's are good thinking to be preemptive like that yeah thank you one of the things and like Dr. Burt said also previously to Allie is we are out of masks we did have several of the N95 masks that are in high demand. We used all those, so we could use some of those homemade ones. I do have more masks coming. Uh, they are projected to be here about the first week of May, so uh, the masks would be great to have. I'll get, I'll get you some too, for sure. Thank you, yeah. Also, um, I don't know if this is the right moment, but I want to say thank you that all of the extra hand sanitizer was donated to our hospital system. I don't know who did the collection. Dr. Burke, I, I know, brought it to me, but I don't know where it came from or if Kylie helped or I don't know who helped, but I just want to say thank you because Metro-wide, we're about, the projection this morning was 17 days until we're out of hand sanitizer so, in the hospitals. So every little bit is very helpful. So thank you. Wow. I believe that was uh, Brad Wilson and the principals did that. They okay. they did all the work. Thank you so much to all of you. Any more questions for Kylie? Hey, I, my wife during the meeting just made a mask. If anybody wants a K-State one. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's the best looking mask I've seen yet. <laughs> Just doesn't look right at all. <laughs> Terrible idea. Terrible idea. Uh, Karen, uh, Dr. Brock, you want to talk to us about uh, education? We we uh, started off uh, pretty slow, and then we've really kind of upped our game. So, Dr. Brock. Yes, we, we did up our game quite a bit. Um, the teachers went above and beyond designing lessons. We are now trying to streamline that just a little bit and get it to a good 
manageable size for teachers, for parents, for students, for everybody. And I think we're well on our way to getting that taken care of this week. Um, a lot of the elementary packets contain um, worksheets that are part of our reading and math series. And we had a conversation about them being copyright protected and can we put them out on the website? So I spoke with our rep from the publisher and he said, with the circumstances and understanding that, you know, we would be copying them in house for our students to be using. He said, I'll tell you what, I will let you put them out on your website because it is kind of buried. It's not like out on the front page for everybody to grab. He said, you can leave them up there for two weeks. And so we are going to start removing as we add a week of choice boards, we're going to start taking off the oldest one. So we'll always have two weeks up, current week and the prior week. And I talked to Mr. Sprague and he felt that was probably okay with um, middle school too. And Trevor, I'm sorry, I didn't get a hold of you today in the rush. And um, that we will do the same thing there to be consistent. There'll always be two weeks posted and the oldest week will always come up off when a new one comes on. But the publisher said he thought that would be fine if we went that way because he understood the situation. So we're working on that. Like I said, we're streamlining the template a little bit, um, trying to get a nice manageable size for everybody. But the teachers are working very, very hard and really sincerely want to make quality choices for the students. I think we scared some people today when they saw the packets because uh, what we're trying to do is give them multiple options. And so if you go uh, look at math, uh, on Monday, I think there were five, depending on the grade level, there were four or five options. So it was never our intention that they do all five of those. It was, uh, it was actually there to provide uh, uh, some help for parents to be able to look at that and, and decide which one best fits their child's needs. And um, there's also a challenge in there that was um, an, an option as well. So, so again, uh, if we scared any parents today, we certainly apologize. We're going to make sure that we provide a little uh, more specific direction. I think if you have a second grade or a fifth grade packet, it probably might have had a little bit more uh, specific direction, but our teachers did an incredible amount of work uh, putting this together. Um, uh, Dr. Brock and the instructional coaches uh, take all that and put it together and give it to Vicki and then Vicki uh, processes it and then we make copies. So again, it was never, our intention was to give parents multiple options, not to scare them to death. So we, again, we apologize, but uh, those of you who helped us get the word out, uh, we certainly appreciate that. And, and uh, we'll make sure that we'll, uh, uh, we like the idea that parents have more than one option to work with their kids. And hopefully depending on the grade level, the kids are actually helping their parents decide which one um, is a good fit for them. I just want to say thank you again to Karen and Trevor and Rod and all your collaboration this last week to get everything on the, and Misty to get everything in one place on the website. I've heard already back from people that they appreciate that a lot, just having it streamlined to one area under that. So thank you for that. Karen, I have a question. I know that it was actually whittled down a little bit and I think what the teachers have done and what you have done is absolutely outstanding. So I appreciate that. If there are people that need packets, I believe they are only available on Monday. If they if they still need a printed packet, because it's, I believe it's 42 pages today for second grade, if they still need a packet, do you want them directed to the school or to the district office? Or what, where's the appropriate place to direct them to still get a copy after Monday? We take, after we distribute on Monday, we take all extra copies to Price Chopper. And and we keep we check that frequently to make sure that they're there okay. and we keep that stocked and you know they can always contact but we always take all of our extras to price chopper and we take care to make sure that those trays are still full okay so the monday is just when the with meal pickups yes but just with the all, meals yes all week if there are copies available yes. at spring Hill yep. okay, great thanks for the clarification sure. great Any more questions for Dr. Brock? Uh, Phil Elliott, can you give us a quick update with what's going on with technology? 
You bet. We've processed about 65 devices through the damage uh, and replacement uh, little drop-off center that we created. That's been going very well. Um, we are uh, discovering um, a lot of, of unique opportunities to um, both push the envelope a little bit as well as meet some needs. Um, <clears throat> we work with special education to get DocuSign in place. Um, Cindy Jados and her team uh, have done a great job utilizing that. Um, they actually processed a, a lot more of their IEP and other special ed documentation through there. Uh, that's been fun to support that. Um, we're also um, currently working with um, some of the high school um, advanced classes uh, to help our, our students get some specialized software that the junior colleges are requiring uh, to complete some of the classes as they, as they try to find their way. Uh, we're trying to help keep up with that as well. Uh, probably the, the last little update to give you, um, we've been a several weeks in, the elementary is starting some online activities this week. We are working with the teachers and the principals uh, to kind of uh, evaluate those places in our community, those, those households that may need to uh, have access some additional equipment and working on a plan to help get that made available to them. Um, you know, as we've said often, uh, we're going to do everything we can. We can't necessarily do everything. Uh, so we're trying to evaluate the best way to attack this, and, and we're going to try to use our teachers and our counselors and our principals as kind of the gatekeeper to help identify those places in, in the greatest need and work our way up from there. Are the hotspots, um, I, I, I would think identification of who, who uh, needs hotspots would be a, a, a real challenge. Is that, is that going pretty well? Yeah, we literally started today uh, with our teachers as they start their weekly communications or sometimes some of them do it daily. But um, the plan is to get that kind of a, a good scope of the project uh, this week. Um, we've got a limited number of, of hotspots in hand right now. And then we're also putting a plan together um, to help address some of those who may not have a device, even if they've got Internet. So. Okay. Um. I didn't get a chance, Dr. Burke, after I talked with you about this Friday. Um, I know there's an internet issue, obviously, in Spring Hill. Even for people who have internet, <laughs> it's always in and out, right? We, I know that firsthand at the office constantly. But um, Avery, my freshman, and I did take a little field trip. I think I told you we would do that. So it was nice to get out of the house Saturday. And we drove to each one of the buildings with her MacBook. And it did connect from the parking lot at all of the buildings except for Wolf Creek and um, Spring Hill High School. So if someone's internet does happen to just go out, which happens all the time, they could just drive up to one of the buildings. And then also Mayor Ellis said the library and the Bean and even my building has guest access if any. I, and I'm going to send you this list in an email. I just hadn't had a chance yet today. but guest access in all those places even i know that's not ideal nobody wants to get in their car but kind of as an option they could drive up to one of the buildings or one of the places on the list and in olathe mcdonald's and panera both worked as well she was thrilled to go to those places to check that out so <laughs> but yeah. i wanted to create kind of an optional list for everyone if they're in we, yeah. we actually did that survey early on in this process ourselves and and Probably I, I, my biggest concern is I don't want to create hangout locations. I think we've got to be very careful as we, as we make those recommendations that we aren't creating a hangout area that defeats the purpose. Um, so we have been identifying those that who, who reach out to us directly that have some very specific issues. Uh, we've identified three very solid locations across the district that we know this from the school buildings that they can connect to. Um, that actually did go out to staff so that they knew uh, if they needed to work with a child specifically, but been a little bit hesitant to make that as a, right. as a blanket statement to, to try not to create a, a hangout location. Sure, I understand that. Nobody would preach about social distancing more than me, um, I'm, but I think it's in those just kind of situations where suddenly today, Suddenlink was out at two o'clock and I had a, one of my little ones had a Zoom meeting, so it was nice to be able to just drive up and connect at the you bet. last minute. So I'll get you that. 
Any more questions for Phil? Well, thank you for checking those sites. Uh, we certainly appreciate in the, you know, we're very cognizant that, that uh, there are some connectivities in our community. And so that's why we're gonna continue to have the packets. Um, again, we know that there's community listen. We wanna do a triage because we don't have unlimited hotspots. And so we wanna to get to those people in the highest need first and then work our way up there. So again, just have parents working with their teachers. Uh, it's never our intention to leave someone out, uh, but at the, other, at the other side, if we have 90% of the people or higher that have technology, we want to be able to, to offer them and then try to fill in the other 10%. And so uh, again, it's never our intention to leave anyone out, but um, a, lot, a lot of different things going on. You know, with the one thing with the coronavirus is that means at some point people are going to get sick. And I, I do appreciate um, uh, HR and uh, our staff as a whole. Um, JC has a plan to set up. We've had been keeping people in reserve and not rotating. So that way, if people in a kitchen get sick, we could open up another kitchen and use different staff. Um, again, we it's never our hope to have anybody get get ill, but that's uh, certainly why we're dealing with everything that we're dealing with. I know that Kylie has some people in reserve that he can use in some different areas as well. And uh, again, there's a lot of people that we are actually paying to stay home and stay healthy. That way, if someone does get sick, then we'll be able to replace them and continue to provide food service and cleaning and, and uh, technology and education and all the things that go into that. So that's kind of hard for some people to understand that uh, we are specifically asking people to stay in reserve, but at some point we're going to have people getting sick and uh, we'll ask, we'll have some um, uh, community members uh, that's already had that, but we'll have more, we'll have students get sick, parents. And so we're going to, our goal is to continue to provide all the service that we are right now. And, uh, continue as long as we can. But um, uh, I do want everyone to realize that uh, at some point we will have some people getting sick. And so what we're able to do right now may slow down. Uh, it is never our intention to actually stop. So we do have some things in place, but uh, did want to kind of give you a, an update at, uh, and probably more than anything, I just want to say how much we appreciate those in the public that are giving us grace. Uh, we know it's tough and we're trying to, to do the best job that we can. And, and uh, I can only imagine what it's like for people that are staying home all day uh, with a couple of kids and then they're worried about finances and, and then all of a sudden they're worried about their kids being educated as well. And so we, we're certainly not perfect, but we're going to continue to do that best we can. And, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, we will minimize any mistakes that we made, but um uh, we also are going to celebrate our victories because, again, uh, we're educating and maybe not the way that everybody would want us to do it, but we're still educating right now and we're feeding and we're providing a lot of services. And uh, the one thing to remind people is spring break wasn't that long ago and we got a heads up in the middle of spring break that this was all happening. And so, again, uh, you know, if you don't toot, toot your own horn every once in a while, it may not get tooted. And I just think uh, our staff has done an incredible job. Uh, our community has really reached out to help make that happen. And uh, the one thing I've always been proud of is the Spring Hill community, uh, regardless of what the issue is, we have a great tendency to come together and to persevere and to overcome. And so with that, uh, uh, thank you. And if you have any other questions about what's going on will stand for uh, questions at this point. Any, any additional questions? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. For if it's okay with you, uh, Mr. Updike, I will send uh, the staff that if you are not part of anything that we're doing now, uh, I'm going to send you out. You're more than welcome to stay as long as you want, but 
we're going to send uh, uh, this is the time where in the board meetings where I wave at you. So I'm waving at you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, moving on to items, items for board, from Board of Education members for future meetings. Uh, does anyone have any additions to this to this list? The list is fairly short. Not exactly sure how to to phrase it, but I think sometime we will need to have some ongoing discussions about what this whole situation has done for a lot of things, financing, how different things. I don't think some things are really going to go back to normal. So um, I know you guys are thinking that, but um, I think on the on the community and county and state level, they're already putting together task forces on how to reopen the economy and things like that. So um, I know that you kind of get in the whirlwind, but at some point we're going to have to, um, you know, kind of look at it. I, I don't know, you know, the, the small businesses are really, really, really feeling the crunch right now and our economy in this area could look a lot different a year from now than it does right now, so. Karen, or Sharon, I, our intention is to continue to give you updates. Um, obviously, in, anytime a school district is dealing um, with uh, as dramatic changes as we have and, and the changes to the economy finances is always going to be something that we're going to uh, be cognizant of and, and be careful of. But you're right. Um, I'm, I'm hearing some of the same things that you're hearing is um, when, you know, what our new normal is going to look like and whether we will get back to that. Uh, but it, it is our intention to continue giving you updates and keeping you in the loop as to um, uh, what we're seeing and what we're dealing with. What is the, there's a, there's a item of discussion for future, before, for, for a future board meeting that, that Sharon is, is asking to have placed on this list. And so it, is it, is it along the lines of, uh, you know, what, what the impacts have been What's different? What's changed forever? What's not changed? Is it along those lines, or is it? Um, because I think I think there's a difference between just having an update and understanding how we do different do business differently. Um, and I think uh, I, mean, I, yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth, Sharon, but I, I think no, it's I think it's about you're, that you're, overall impact. Yeah, I think there's you know lots of discussions that are going to take place, mm -hmm. um, especially um kind of the economic part of it and i i'm thinking like july or august or september or whatever and i know that that you guys are well aware of it but um there's probably a variety of discussions that could take place but i'm thinking things that strategically the board would have to be involved in you know maybe there's going to be policy changes maybe um I, I, I think the state, I've heard discussions of different states that are looking at how they can get some money back from certain areas that wasn't utilized from schools in the spring because there wasn't anybody in their buildings. I don't know whether that's even constitutional, but, you know, there's lots of people that are wanting money right now because there's not a lot going around. So I think the money discussion could be very varied <laughs> sounds kind of wishy-washy but mm -hmm. good point i'm not sure how to phrase the item for the <laughs> so it, it, it's just an overall overall impact right it's a summary of overall financial impact to our district um yeah, and if we if we put it out there, put it down there, something as generic as that and say, let's, let's, uh, maybe we can refine it in August or September, um, mm -hmm. just to capture the thought. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Is that okay? Okay. Anything else to add to the list?
All right. Uh, moving along, uh, board work calendar. Dr. Burke, how are we doing? I think that we're in pretty good shape uh, if we roll down there into April. Uh, about the only thing that um, I think that really jumps out is uh, obviously the National School Boards Conference didn't, didn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about uh, the employment of certified personnel at the next board meeting. And then uh, uh, handbook changes. We could have brought it to this meeting, but the principals are dealing with so much right now. I wanted to give them an extra two weeks. And then the only other thing is the SRO agreement. Uh, I think I shared with you in super a few weeks ago that I went before uh, the county budget and uh, I believe that was the uh, board of, uh, county board of ed or uh, I just went completely blank commissioners and we made a proposal to get a, a second SRO and it sounded like everything was really good but we just not have gotten any solid confirmation uh, and of course that all happened right before uh, the uh, uh, shutdown as well. And so uh, I've got a couple of phone calls out, but that that right now I believe is the only big thing in April that's kind of sitting out that uh, we're waiting to hear back on. So otherwise calendar, I think we're in pretty good shape. Okay, very good. Uh, committee reports? I'm not sure there's many committees going on actually. So any committee reports? Anybody had a virtual uh, site council meeting? No? Okay. Uh, superintendent report, Dr. Burke. I believe you guys have probably heard plenty from me tonight, so I'm going <laughs> to okay. I'm gonna pass. All right. We do need an executive session this evening. Mr. President, this is Jason Wengolt. I move that the board move to exec executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters of non-elected personnel to protect the privacy interest interest of an identifiable individual under coma. Those to be in session include the Board of Education members and superintendent of schools when necessary and administrators as requested. The executive session to begin at oh, 9.30 and um, with the open meeting resuming at no later than 10.30. Very good. On this virtual meeting. Second, Eric Boyle. It's moved and seconded to move to executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters, non selected or non elected personnel under coma. Candy, please collect the vote. Start with Mr. Boyle. Yes. Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Winbolt. Yes. Mr. Updike. Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Sealing? Yes. Approved. Very good, thank you. Where are we moving, Phil? Okay, so I'm going to open the uh, executive session breakout room for you. You will get a pop-up that says you want to join that room that will take you out of this meeting and put you in your own sub-meeting. When you're done, in the bottom right-hand corner of your Zoom window where it says end meeting, or leave meeting, um, it will say leave breakout room. So when you're ready to come back on your own, you can come back. Um, if you wanna come get somebody else to come into the room, designate somebody to come out, and that way uh, we know who went in at that time, okay? The public will go to a screen that says executive session in progress, and they will get no audio uh, until you resume, resume from executive session. Are there any questions? Is it recorded, the executive session? On it Zoom? is not. No, it'll just say executive session in progress is all it'll say. Well, you guys have two minutes to go get done whatever you need to get done. I'm going to go ahead and open the room for you. Did we vote on that? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Okay. I'll be here waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.
since we have four of us, do we just need to do another 30 minutes or 45 minutes? I would go longer than shorter because you can I'll, always come out sooner. I'll, I'll do 11.15. Just do not later than. No, it's no later than 11.15. Okay, I'm gonna need a motion and a second. Yep. So uh, Mr. President, I move that the board go into executive session for the person uh, purpose of discussing personnel matters of non-elected personnel to protect the privacy interests of an unidentifiable individual under coma. Those to be in session include the Board of Education members and Superintendent of Schools as needed. Uh, executive session to begin at 10.32 and return to this open meeting in virtual space no later than 11.15. Second. Sarah. Okay, I need to know who's there. I can see Eric and Sharon, Jason. Jason Brent. Kelly and Brent as well. Okay. Okay, then we're gonna take a vote. Mr. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Winbolt? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Okay, vote for four. Allie's there too. And Allie? Allie? Yes, sorry, yes. Okay, so you're back in session till 11.15. Send us back, Phil. Yeah, you're on mute too. In order for me to send you back, you have to, you can get in there yourself uh, okay. from the breakout room on the bottom, or I can close the room and re reopen it to get the no, problem. We'll Just join back in. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. They're all back in and I'll switch it to executives.
Back up. You're back up. Uh, moves at the board, go into executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters and non elected personnel to protect the privacy interests of an identifiable individual under coma. Those to be in session are Board of Education members, Superintendent of Schools. Uh, the executive session to begin at 11.15 and in no later than 12 a.m. April 14th, 2020. Um, we will resume back in this open meeting. Okay, I'm sorry. Later then. I didn't catch the end time. 12 a.m. April 14th, 2020. <laughs> no later. No later, no later than. than. Okay, I've got, I, I've got five of you. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, and I'm sorry, who was the second? I can sure. second, Allie. Oh, Claire. Claire. All right, we'll take a vote now. Mr. Winbolt? Yes. Mrs. Sealing? Yes. Mr. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Approved. Bye. Bye-bye.
and you're good. Phil, I see you're not at home either. I appreciate you staying late. Andy, too. Thank you. Candy, yes. thank you. All right. Who's Doug, you're, here? you're muted, Doug. Who's that down at the bottom that just says USD 230? That's the broadcast machine. Oh. So welcome back. Uh, we do have one additional uh, action item, which is personnel contract approval. Mr. President, this is Jason Winbolt. Uh, I move the board approve uh, the contract extension of one year for the superintendent's contract. Additional year. Right. Yeah, additional. Yes, extension of one additional year. Okay. Second, Eric Boyle. It's uh, moved and seconded. Uh, moved and seconded for uh, an, uh, extending the superintendent's contract an additional year. Any questions or comments? Candy, please click the vote. We'll start with Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Winbolt. Yes. Mr. Updike? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Sealing? Yes. Mr. Boyle? Yes. Approved. Move to adjourn. Our final step is adjournment. Move to adjourn. Jason? Second, Allie. All those in favor? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. What? 1202. 1202. Welcome to tomorrow. All right. <laughs> Today, tomorrow.